you went from, you know, playing it safe, being one of the guys like we all did growing up in male dominated industries, right? And what I love is that when you embraced your feminine side and your spirituality, you just blossom. So I'd love you to share that story with us. Yes, it's crazy to think back and I'm sure everybody listening can think back to the former version of themselves pre-divorce or pre-career change five, 10 years ago. I started out in the financial industry in 2010, but I feel like I'd grown up in it because my father's been an advisor for over 35 years. And when I joined him, my brother joined at the same time and it was all male advisors. Now we had a very traditional setup, even to the point where this happens a lot with financial advisor offices. The back office support staff is usually women, right? 80, 90% mm -hmm. are women. So there was women in the firm, but they weren't client facing. They were in that kind of sales role, that advisory role. So very quickly, I felt out of place, we'll say. I came with a lot of ambition, a lot of big ideas, but I fell into this routine, which a lot of people do. I did what I was told to do. I did what was expected of me. I did all the shoulds. And what happened was I blended in. And that go to that picture where I'm in, you know, black, little makeup, no hot pink lips, hair pulled back, very subdued. I blended in. I sounded like every other advisor. I kind of tried to blend in with the boys club and fit in, which for, for women especially, we have that longing to belong, mm -hmm. to fit in. And we'll, we'll almost morph ourselves in order mm -hmm. to make that happen. And right around this happening, another thing I was noticing is while we were giving you know, good help to people. I also saw how the financial industry was falling short in a lot of ways when it comes to people with their money. Mm -hmm. We'd help people get out of debt and then they'd find themselves back in debt or they're scared of running out of money. We help build them up to, you know, million, two, three, five million dollars of assets. And they're even more terrified of what to do with the money. So I saw like, we're helping them, but it's not lasting it's not sustainable we're not really hitting the root issues of why people are feeling a certain way with money and then behaving a certain way with money so those two things kind of collided at once and i looked at myself in the mirror one day probably about five years in and i just didn't even recognize myself mm -hmm. anymore i'm like who is this person i feel like my light had gone out that spark in me had gone out and all along i really felt this pull to help women with money so I begged my father, can I just do some events geared towards women? And finally he said yes. And that's when my spark kind of got reignited. And I saw how excited I was to put all these women in one room and have real honest, vulnerable conversations when, about life, money, family, divorce, career, all of it, because money's affecting all of these mm -hmm. areas of our lives. That launched my blog, Not Your Father's Advisor, which launched my three <laughs> selling <love> books, <laughs> two programs. Yeah. My father did give the approval for the name, Not Your Father's <laughs> Advisor. And then last year we opened up the Women's Wealth Boutique and I have to use how you, you said it earlier as our tagline, but our whole goal was let's shop for our money, not just with our money, right? Let's change it so now it's, Take that same fun, that same experience, the same shopping high, but now you're using your money to just keep growing and building and leveraging and building passive income, protection, all of those amazing things that give women a real sense of security, mm -hmm. freedom, stability in their life that they've been after for so long. So I left my father's firm last year. We opened up the Women's Wealth Boutique. We brought on five advisors last year. We're bringing on four this year, and that's our goal to bring on three to five advisors, female advisors each year, all over different states from Washington State, Alabama, Colorado, Michigan, New Jersey, all across the states. I actually have in my office, as a constant reminder, a pink fl flag of the United States, and we have pins. So we have a pinning ceremony whenever we get a new state in <laughs> the Women's Wealth Boutique. So it's been an insane journey, all while having two babies, getting married, you know, opening up an office in my own hometown, which as a mom to save time, get rid of the commute is my, one of my advice <laughs> as best you can. And, you know, sprinkling all of that in COVID pandemic, 
um, that really is what made me go inward and think, what's going to be the best home for my business, mm -hmm. for what I want for it, for my clients, for my family? And that's where we decided, you know, we need to create our own platform, a platform that's going to support women and not stifle women or say no, what I was constantly getting from the traditional broker dealers, right? We don't understand what you're doing. It's too much work. So it's just easier to say no. Yeah. And we settle for that. We settle for that so much and getting my story out there has helped a lot of other female advisors get over that fear and think, I don't have to settle anymore. Mm -hmm. And I shouldn't settle because I'm not happy. <clears throat> I'm, and sometimes we, we try to make it work. How many times do we try to make it work? For years, I tried to make it work. I'm like, I'm, but I'm still not happy. So helping women take that risk and overcome those fears or embrace those fears and use it to fuel them has been really exciting work over the last year.